I'm like, Jesus, it's crazy out there. This is Mike, he's supposed to, uh... Yeah, it's, it's working. <laughs> Yeah, hey, Mike, I'm supposed to be moderating. <laughs> so you just have the switch turned off. Not much, Dino. How's have it going, right? Have we ever met before? No, we haven't. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> Give it up for Dino Stamatopoulos, everybody. Thank you. Uh -oh. so how's it going, man? I'm exhausted. I've been drinking since like 8 a.m. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> have you been having fun in Miami? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I've lost like 20 pounds just walking. That's awesome, man. It's humiliating. <laughs> uh, what's everybody doing? You guys, you guys come like what for community? Moral oral? Moral oral? All right, get up here. Yeah. Well, let's start talking about that. What, what was it like making this show? Um, everything in my life is a nightmare. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it shows, doesn't it? Yeah. It <laughs> we look like we're trying to close each other's loop right now. This is, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? It's a general question. It was, uh, what was, what was the know, process I mean, of... I think, like, uh, you know, first season was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, trying to find what the characters in the show was. And then, you know, I always wanted it to be a very real show. But, you know, first season, we were just trying to find it still. And then second season, we kind of found who the characters are and started playing with it. And then my third season, I just wanted everyone to commit suicide. Yeah. <laughs> now, because I know that it was like a parody of like the, the Davy and Goliath, uh, you know, cartoons of the old days. But what it was wasn't, it? Uh, you know, originally written as that. Yeah. yeah it was. Uh, uh, we decided that was the best way to, uh, to portray these characters. To stop motion. Uh, Nick Weidenfeld said, hey, why don't you go check out the Robot Chicken Studios and you know, see how they do things there and maybe write a few jokes for them. And, uh, and I went over there and uh, yeah, I was amazed by how uh, efficient the studio was. How, how was it originally written? What was the original moral oral? The, or, the original moral oral script was a script that I read, wrote 10 years ago for Iggy Pop where he plays a 12 year old kid. And he tries to get into uh, to bars, you know, with a fake mustache. And going, hey, come on, you're not, you know, you're not 21. Uh, I just read actually the Leaky Pop is uh, he stopped jumping in uh, into the audiences because he hurts himself too much. <laughs> but I saw him, I saw him like 15, 20 years ago. Hey, everyone gets old. Fuck you. But like now, I just have to listen to his songs. Uh, yeah, I, could, <laughs> I couldn't jump into a uh, fucking audience when I was. I mean, there's kids out here, right? Yeah. That should be nice. Anyway, I, I gave him the script. It was called Iggy, and uh, he's like, whoa, dude, thanks. You know, they're, hey, there's a lot of pussy around. You know, we were at an outdoor cafe, and yeah. couldn't stop looking at women. So, uh, you know, I, I couldn't sell the show. But, uh, but then, uh, ten years later, I, I uh, sold it to an old and made it uh, stop motion. Was that... Was that how difficult? It, it seems like such a rigorous process. The idea of stop motion. It's really easy. You just tell a bunch of people to do it, and they do it for you. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't animate. Yeah. Go ask them. You just like, oh, that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> they actually love it. They're they're very passionate, artistic people who get paid a very little money. Uh, I, I wish they got paid more. But is it, is it the thing that you're proudest to have worked on? I think so. I think Moral Oral is, you know, it was my show. You know, I worked out on other great shows. I worked out on uh, uh, the first season, years on, and uh, Mr. Show, and uh, the Danny Carter, and stuff like that. But this was, uh, this was mine. It was more fun to be in control of something. Yeah. How was it working on the Danny Carter show? Because there's so many great writers that were on that show that have gone on to awesome stuff. You know? Yeah, there were a lot of great writers who were miserable on that show. Yeah. You know, like Louis C.K. cried on that show. Yeah. yeah. Why hasn't that been an episode of a show? <laughs> <laughs> I think he must have been. Yeah. Um, and Charlie Kaufman was probably
definitely crying inside. He, uh, nothing of his really, he got two sketches on, and one of them was over credits. It was a uh, Kermit the Frog, Great uh, Heart kind of crazy. I actually did the voice in Puppeteer and Kermit. <laughs> hey, ho! See, I can, I can do it. Yeah. Is there, is there, when you're doing, when you're working on a show like that, and you just said that some people get one sketch? Is this so boring? <laughs> I saw, you yawned a little bit, but are you just tired? Is it? Yeah. Trying to get some oxygen. We're a little, we're a little calmed out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, is it how competitive is it to get a sketch on the air on a show like that? Is it cutthroat or is it collaborative? It's a, it's a little competitive on that kind of show because it's once a week. I remember on Conan, it was competitive for the first show. Like we worked two months to get this first Conan show on the air. And we're like, woo, yeah, we did it. And then we're like, oh wait, there's one every day. And we're like, uh, so then we started yelling at the other writers who didn't write much. We're like, come on, we gotta keep going here. But with, uh, with a weekly show and a garbage show, uh, yeah, it was a little more competitive to let's go by. And what about Mr. Show? Was that more competitive or not? Uh, I didn't feel a lot of competition because I think everyone wrote on every sketch, you know. Maybe someone's personal sketch got on. Or I think everyone uh, really worked together. That was like the one show that I ever did where if anyone had any funny idea, I usually got on to it. You know, with like, um, like a, story, a story show like, uh, oh, see, they're going home. Sorry. Sorry That's a sad bunny. <laughs> Saddest bunny in the world. Yeah. It's like a Tom Waits song. There's the sad bunny. I'm very away. sensitive. <laughs> I don't care about the process. <laughs> I blame you for asking boring questions. <laughs> No, no, you're asking fine questions. Uh, where were we? So I asked more uh, bunny. Oh, yeah, we were yelling at that bunny. Yeah. <laughs> I just asked more bunny specific questions. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I had a uh, pet rabbit. I had two pet rabbits when I was a kid. And, uh, and then I got sick of them and let them go. And, uh, into you know, the wild? Or? Well, into the wild of the suburbs of Chicago. Yeah. And. Um, yeah! Wild! And, uh... One guy's clapping for bunnies, everyone else is clapping for Chicago. And I had this cousin who was like 20 years older than me who was living with us because he was poor. Now he owns a Greek restaurant in uh, Chicago. And he told me, I just visited him for the first time the other day, he's like, you know when we caught those rabbits and ate them, you eat your pets. <laughs> Fucking eat my own pet. And it was delicious. Were you ever afraid of being haunted by the ghost of the bunnies? Like, why have you forsaken me, do you know? I, well, I mean, I figured, I didn't know for like 30 years, you know, by now, the ghost must be dead. Yeah. <laughs> ghosts have a shelf life too. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Those ghosts must be like on their last legs. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what was it? What, what, what was the best Mr. Sketch? I saw you yawn too. Yeah. I'm looking for yawns. <laughs> In all the right places. Yeah. What was what? Oh. <laughs> what was what was the like, what was the Mr. Show sketch you believed in the most that they just were like, nah, we can't. Nothing I ever believed in didn't get on. That's awesome. Yeah, usually if uh, if they didn't if they didn't let it go on, I looked at it and like that right. It's not that good. So do you, does everyone want to start? Giving questions right at this. All right, what do you got in that bag? What is that? Right. Something is phallic sticking out of it. Oh, that's a thick lightsaber. What sound does that make? <laughs> it goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll do whatever he wants. Um, he said he said he'll, he'll probably come back, so I gotta get back out there and go back into makeup and have him touch my goddamn eyes again. Well, Dan was watching um, this uh, reality show. I can't remember what it was, but it was a guy who had like all these affectations, you know, like, like crazy hair and big 
mutton chops and just the craziness. But he kept wanting everyone to like him for himself. And Dan thought that was really funny. And the idea that a guy put Starbirds on his face because he wanted to be called Starbirds once we called Alex. Uh, so uh, he, uh, he's been talking about it, you know, for like weeks and weeks. And finally I got a text and it's like, ding, ding. Dino, uh, can you grow your side birds out? We want, uh, we want you to be Starbirds. I said, okay. Ding, ding. And I hear, ding, ding. It's like, he's like two feet away from me. Yes, sir. What, what is it? Oh, you got a copy album? Yeah. Uh, you dickens. Why are you keeping that from me for? Because it's your panel. <laughs> Tell me about your uh, comedy album. Uh, it's, it, was it, was, what's it like to make a comedy album? It's, oh jeez, it's... Yeah. Go ahead and yeah, you like that? Too. Well, I, I feel you. like this was your website and he's a pop-up ad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was fun. Uh, yeah, it was, it was great. I got to... I don't fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do, I do. I, give me, uh, you know... Give you me reminded me of my dad before, but now you really do. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I got paid. I got paid for doing this. Oh wait, I actually did get paid. <laughs> I thought that was a joke. What's that? Oh yeah. Sometimes Florida gets a bit Florida. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, funny you asked. I think he is a pop-up. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, on July twenty-first or twenty-second. Whatever, if it's a, a Sunday, after Family Guy, uh, ADHD is going to prepare two cartoons. Uh, one of them is going to be uh, Axe Cop, that a lot of people probably know about. Uh, I have nothing to do with that, because I'm not six years old. Um, well, he's seven now. We might get there in time. And he's almost older than the ghosts that are supposed to be. And then uh, I have a, a show called High School USA, which is about uh, millennial kids living in, in high school and having their uh, stupid diet watch. Is it, is it just a pilot, or do you have this? No, I have 12 uh, quarter hour episodes. Is yeah. it, uh, what's the format, live action? It's a, it's a regular cartoon. Awesome. Yeah, it's like, uh, it kind of looks like the art. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't want it to, but you know, Nick Weidenfeld wanted it to look like something. Who are, who are some of the voices? Uh, Vincent Carthizer from Mad Men. Awesome. Uh, uh, Mandy Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Sasha, Sasha or Sasha Mamet. Okay. Yeah, you know David Mamet's daughter? Oh, no. That's awesome. Yeah, David Mamet's going to watch my goddamn show. <laughs> Did you get to meet him yet? No. <laughs> What are you doing to my daughter? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even meet her yet. She was like on. She did. A, she did all the uh, voices for Skype. Oh wow. Yeah. How does that does that sound weird? Because I've never been able to get Skype to work. Is it? it sounds really weird, especially when I masturbate in front of her. That's a mammoth move. Yes. Total mammoth move. And, uh, Thank uh, you. Mike, can you do a little bit of the time? No. This is his panel. Come on, do it. Hi, I'm, I'm Jay Leno, and this is Dino Samatopoulos, and this panel is uh, almost as uncomfortable as uh, watching a baby die. There you go. That, why are you... <laughs> Did you ever see Chris Elliott do uh, Leno on Letterman? No. You're, you're, you're too young. He, uh, he had a full beard when he was on Letterman, and uh, put, like, fake skin over it to make the chin. And, uh, <laughs> And That's was, more effort than Leno's put in the yeah. last 20 years I mean, towards hilarious. anything. Yeah. But Leno was pretty funny back then. He was yeah. just I, I hear that, and then... Look it up on YouTube. And then just when NBC, when, when he just started... Yeah, he's a son. He's a son. Yeah. Was there, was there, because I love the original Conan. I, I grew up on that. Masturbating Bear, Pinbot 5000, all yeah, that that's stuff. Not even, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's not even original. But what, was there this like freedom of like we're on network TV, but no one's really watching, so we can do what we want? Well, people were watching for a while. When I was on it, they were watching because it was right off Letterman's heels. Yeah. 
and then everyone said, oh, this sucks, and stopped watching. Yeah, I just, but there was like this freedom, because here was a guy who just, he was a writer, and he was, you know, SNL and The Simpsons and stuff. I'll was tell you, I, I saw the uh, audition that Conan had, it was on The Tonight Show set, uh, for the show, and he's never been better. Yeah. And I'm like, if this is the worst he is, this show's going to be great. Yeah. But he was never better. <laughs> oh well. Oh, hi, you've been waiting a while, little guy. Oh yeah, did you see that? It is still on you. Oh, it's, it's on YouTube, right? I, uh, I released that tape years ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, it kind of sneaks up on you. I didn't really know that I was in that until just stop! Oh, yeah. Whoa! <laughs> really? Alright. It is looked at as like this all star lineup of guys, you know. Right, but has anyone seen it? I think so. I think the legend Have has you? grown. I've watched bits and pieces of it, yeah. Just not that great. It's, but it's like, but knowing that they were all in it. This you know? show's better, don't you think? Yeah. Well, it's the difference between HBO and ABC, right? You know, and the freedom. You're right. Get off my back. <laughs> what was? Do a little Leno. <laughs> so, uh, what was uh, what was the best Mr. Show transition you ever wrote? Oh, I'll tell you. Because that was a really fun part of the show. Um, I wrote the. Um, I wrote a couple transitions, but this one, I don't know if this is a transition, it was at the beginning of the show, Bob and David came out and they found a banana on the stage and went, hey, look at the banana, everyone! And then it was, uh, the whole theme of the show was the lost episode, and at the end, someone took the lost episode and threw it into space and it turned into a uh, spaceship, and on the spaceship were two monkeys, and like the planet of the apes, and they put they found the tape and they put it in, and it was Bobby and Hey, look, a monkey, uh, a banana, everybody! And then they just started jumping around and shit. Uh, you gotta see it. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't translate to me being drunk by your way. You in the condom costume? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. I remember you. You guys are dressed differently than me. Um, what's my favorite what? Um, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> uh, I like Tim and Harry. Uh, I like Tim and Harry. Thanks. Are you, are you, uh, you guys, um, with, what were, you, what were you dressed as yesterday? You were like just normal, right? And you were like, and, and you were like some kind of like, uh, like schoolgirl outfit, right? What was it? What was it? Oh, okay. But you're 21, right? So I can say this. Uh, are you gonna fuck better in these costumes? I do feel like they should ID some of the costumes here. You know, you should be at least like 21 to wear some of the costumes. She is, she's 21, she can dress. No, she can, yeah, but I feel like some of the girls you look at, like Al Pacino just starts doing his devil's advocate speech. As you look, but don't touch. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Because, because I'll get in trouble. Yeah, you don't want your boner to have to apologize to you. I didn't mean to, man. It just, you know. My boner like, is a dick. He <laughs> <laughs> would never apologize to me. That sounds like a John Mayer song, My Boners. It's, <laughs> it's a B-side. Yes, for years. What can we do for you? Nope. No, no one sends mail anymore. I just get hate comments. I just said I don't get anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't get anything. Sorry. Ask another goddamn question. <laughs> Uh, you were just caddy to a girl with cat ears. That's <laughs> the first one. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've gotten any uh, any kind of like uh, snail mail you kids call it nowadays. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, I've gotten like, um, I've gotten uh, transsexuals wanting to fuck me. <laughs> but that's, but that's like, on, uh, that's like Facebook. Yeah. What, uh, what's the, what's the weirdest standards and practices letter you got from Moral Order? What's the craziest note where you're like, these people don't understand comedy? Well, I, uh, we did, uh, we did a couple interstitials a couple months ago. I don't know if they've aired yet. It's with the characters, and it was to promote the website, and they're going to be on the TV. And, um, one of the interstitials is Clay uh, looking at a picture of uh, Coach Afrin, who he's in love with. And uh, he starts unzipping. He's like, okay. he doesn't even start unzipping yet. He starts unbuckling his pants. He's like, I'm coming for you, you know, I'm coming for you. Yeah. And they're like, remove the cum. Come. Yeah. And I'm like, well, no, he was saying I'm coming. He's not coming yet. Yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't a uh, double entendre. Yeah. And also, they didn't want to play smoking a pipe, even though Oral smoked crap the first season. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare. Hi. What, what can I do you for? Uh, what do you want to do to me? Uh, I'll, I'll, how about half that? Um, in bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No one was there. Like, what am I going to do there? I'm standing there with my dick in my hands. <laughs> I love you too. Sorry about everything. Yeah. Hi. Finally a woman. Another woman. I, I was involved with that. Uh, Dan, uh, you know, really writes a lot of it himself. I wrote the first draft, which I was happy with, and then he threw everything away and he wrote his own. Uh, he didn't throw everything away, but uh, yeah, we, we worked on that together. And uh, we, uh, my studio, I have a studio with Dan also, and that was our first project we did for that. And since then we've done Frank and Lowell second season, and before Laurel, and now we're doing the uh, Charlie Kaufman movie Lisa, you guys, have you heard about that at all? What is that project? Amazing. I saw this uh, Charlie Kaufman uh, project like uh, seven years ago. Um, it was uh, performed as a uh, live as a radio play, all audio with sound effects and everything, and it worked beautifully as an audio play. That's what we should be experienced. And I said, hey, let's do it as a stop motion movie. And he said, okay, and now he's involved with that. And we raised like uh, on Kickstarter. We raised two hundred thousand dollars. Or no, we asked for two hundred thousand dollars. We got four hundred thousand dollars. Now the budget's like up to like two million. That's awesome. Because uh, Charlie Kaufman is uh, he's a perfectionist. What's it like working with him? He's a he's a nice guy. He's very you know he's he's very specific. He uh, uh, he's uh, yeah. I mean he, he has his vision and. Uh, and he's never worked in stop motion before, so he doesn't know what, what goes into it. So, and the director's really afraid of him, and he lets him do whatever he wants. So, it's going to be a pretty amazing project. It's going to sink us as a company. Yeah. But I don't care. I just want to see the movie. We're back. We're back. Yeah. I mean, how does it, how does it feel? Your wishes come true. How does it feel to know that you put so much awesome comedy in the world that like people struggle for years to see their dreams come true and you've been a comedy writer for over 20, that's got to be pretty incredible, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't really, it doesn't sink in until like I'm at these things, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I don't, uh, I hate myself usually. I, I, I get in front of a computer and uh, there's a blank screen and I'm like, how do, how do you write again? What's a letter? I'm a fraud. I hate myself. <laughs> so, like, is that the secret to your success? <laughs> I hope not. I <laughs> hope this isn't what it takes to be successful. People, people will have a lot of misery out of them. Definitely. <laughs> Question number two.
I loved it when he was. I mean, when I was on the Ben Stiller show with him, it was my first job, and I'd walk up to writers and I'd say, hey, what do you think of this sketch? And they'd go, hey, yeah, it looks good to me. And I'd be like, you asshole, you know, you're not giving me any constructive criticism. But with Bob, he'd read it and he was like, what are you, an idiot? Don't hand this in. Do this and this and that. I, I liked his, uh, I liked his brutal honesty. 